FreeDoos is designed as an open source modern do system. Its official website provides a convenient way to install on virtual machines and hard disks. However, there is very little support for installing on USB. Without further ado, today I will share with you three ways to install FreeDoos to USB. Before we go, I assume you know about creating a VM and Windows utilities. Method 1. Flash FreeDoos to USB using VHD file and Rufus. A VHD file is a virtual hard disk file. In a virtual machine, this file will be treated as a physical hard drive. We can generate it through a virtual machine, and then flash it to the USB. The programs we will use can be found in the description below. Here's how. First download the CD image from the official FreeDoos website, unzip those file and take a look at where the bootable CD is. We'll use it later. Next, plug in your USB. Open Disk Management. Find your USB and remember its size. Next, install VirtualBox as usual. If your computer doesn't support VTX, or your CPU is 86-bit, you can choose VirtualBox 5.2. After that, open VirtualBox and create a new VM. Go to Expert Mode. Name the VM whatever you want. Set version to do's. Set the memory size to 64 megabytes or more. Select create a virtual hard disk now, then create. Next, remember your VHD file location. For the file size, subtract the reserved space of more than 10 megabytes from the capacity to avoid error while flashing. Notice the file size also decides how big your USB will be. Select file type to VHD, and most importantly, choose fixed size, or Rufus won't be able to recognize it. Once you're done, click create. It'll take a few minutes. Now, start the VM, choose the live CD image, and install this wonderful thing. There you go. Once your work on VM has completed, download Rufus, open the app. Make sure that you're using the correct device. Then on the boot selection, Select the VHD file from your VM. If everything goes well, Rufus will identify the file as a bootable disk and allows you to flash using the media. If so, click start to start the flashing process. It might take a while, depends on how big your file size is. Once finished, you can boot into FreeDoos using the USB. Just make sure to change the boot device in BIOS menu. If everything was according to plan, the booting process on a real machine should looks like this. Congratulations! Now you have a handy bootable FreeDoos USB device. It's relatively easy to do. You can also keep the VHD file as a backup of the FreeDoos system. But we're not able to use the whole USB since we reserve some spaces. And worse of all, if we didn't partition well, the partition size will be limited to 2 GB. Configuring it takes some knowledge of partitioning which I'll do it in the last of the video. And this method might not work if your Rufus didn't help you create a boot record. Some USB also suffered from an accessible issue. But as a conclusion, this is the easiest way to make a bootable FreeDoos USB. Method 2. Create FreeDoos USB using Rufus and mounted VHD. We'll ask Rufus to build a tiny FreeDoos environment on USB then copy the FreeDoos edition files to USB manually. Just like method 1, we'll need Rufus, VirtualBox, and FreeDoos installation files. Plug in your USB, open Rufus, choose the corresponding device, and the boot selection, we'll choose FreeDoos, and the file system part and we'll use FAT32 for better result of capacity. Click start to start the flashing process. After that, your USB is technically bootable now. If you try to boot, you'll see this screen, which is the core part of FreeDoos from version 0.84. It's ready to go, but still not all. And now we'll copy the newer FreeDoos component to our bootable device. To do that, we'll create a VM and install FreeDoos.
Now we've got the VHD file. We'll mount it to our host system. To do so, we'll be using the disk management tool from Windows. Clicks on any blank space, then click action, attach VHD, browse, then choose the VHD file from the FreeDo's VM, then press OK. You should see your VHD being attached. Open the attached disk from Explorer. Before we go, remember to show the hidden files in Organize, Folder and Search options. Now, we're going to overwrite the FreeDo's files in our USB with our new fresh data. Copy all data in our virtual hard disk, then overwrite them to your USB. If the USB isn't showing up, replug the device. This will take a while, don't interrupt the process. If the file is duplicated between source disk and USB, overwrite it anyway with the option copy and replace. Once it's finished, you can eject your USB. And now you have a bootable FreeDo's USB media, again, D you can try to boot it on a real machine. Although its MBR use is a legacy version of FreeDo's, the kernel and other files are brand new so don't worry about it. The good thing about this method is that it uses the entire USB, unlike method 1. You can also access the storage in FAT32 format for sure. However, some people might feel weird with this legacy MBR. So next, I'll introduce method 3, which combined both of the benefits of method 1 and 2, while require some skills. But don't worry, I'll also show the steps. Method 3, Implementation with VM. Instead of create a VHD file, we'll directly map a virtual hard disk to the USB drive. But since FreeDo's doesn't support installing on USB, we'll also make our system recognize our USB as a HDD. This time, we'll need VirtualBox, a filter driver, and some utilities that are built in in Windows system. So, we have to let our host system recognize the USB stick as a HDD, or when you proceed to partitioning, the FDISK process will keep screaming illegal operation. So let's do it we'll have to install something called a filter driver. It will tell your OS to recognize your USB as a HDD. You can edit your own filter driver. I use the driver sample from Woe's Hub. These files will be provided in the description. After downloading and unzipping, open the file Kfadisk INF using any text editor you like. The next step is to identify the device ID of your USB. To do it open device manager and select the properties of your USB drive. On details tab in the hardware ID setting, select and copy the top one for PID. We'll use it later. If your system is 32-bit, find the section CFA disk device, replace the string after the comma with the one you just copied, in section strings, name the device whatever you want, then save the file. If your system is 64-bit, Find the section CFA disk device and CFA disk device NTAMD64. Replace the string after IDE with the PID you just copied. In section strings, name the device whatever you want. Then save the file. Then, open device manager. Right clicks on USB. Then choose update driver software. Click on browse my computer for updated driver software. Let me pick driver, have disk and browse. Specify the path to the directory where your driver is. Then install this driver. If you see any warning messages about driver is not signed, just say yes to them to complete the installation. However in 64-bit system, because the built-in signature checks, we'll have to sign the driver ourselves or disable driver signature verification on Windows using these command. After the installation, reboot your computer. If your USB is presented as a HDD or basic in disk management, then you've succeed. However, if you suffered BSOD or something else after the installation, we'll have to remove the drive manually. Which is the two files Kfadisk size and Kfadisk INF, you can find them in these place. Now, we'll make sure we're using the entire USB and the partition is formatted as FAT32. If not, repartition and format the fake HDD as it should be. Also, remember the number of the disk label, which belongs to the fake HDD. For example, mine is 1. We'll use it later. Next, we'll offline and unlock the device so VirtualBox can take full control of the USB. To do this, we'll open command prompt as an admin, run disk part.
Next, run select disk B where B is the disk label which you noted in disk management. Or you can use list disk to see disk sizes. Affline the disk using a fline disk. All volumes will disappear from Windows Explorer. Disable read only status using attributes disk clear read only, then verify with attributes disk. Next, exit disk part using exit. Then go to virtual box command line dictionary. You can navigate it manually or type this in CMD. Then, we'll map a virtual machine to the USB drive. To do that, we'll type this in command line. Where R is the place you will create the virtual hard disk file and B is the disk label which you noted in disk management. For example, I'll type this in command line, and then press enter. Now you've created a VMDK file that is directly mapped from our USB stick. We'll create a VM using this file. However, remember to run VirtualBox as an administrator. At the IDE category of storage tab, attach the VMDK file you just created with this VM. And the most importantly, remember to unclick use host IO cache or your virtual machine will keep shouting at you with a warning. Now everything is ready, we'll install and configure FreeDos into this disk drive. After the installation, we can finally reboot the PC into our new freshy FreeDos USB stick with the newest version of MBR and kernel. Notice. To make our USB accessible again, we'll have to open disk management, and online our disk. The USB will still be presented as a hard disk drive. To make it USB again, you'll have to manually uninstall the USB driver and reboot. Notice that the filter driver is installed on your PC only so it only affects your USB's appearance in your OS. On the other OS, the USB will be recognized as, just a USB. To summary. This is a quite complex method, but also my first succeed method. It's not easy. But by doing so, you'll genuinely be installing free dos on your USB without limitations. You'll have the newest version of MBR, kernel and edition files directly installed on your USB. In my opinion, it's my favorite way of installing free dos. But since it takes too much time to configure, I decided to put it to the last method. But anyway, these three methods should help you create the newest bootable FreeDos USB stick. No matter which method you use, you are free to choose what you want, because that's what FOSS software was born for. Stimples is an acronym for FreeDos installer my package list editor software, and is an interactive package manager. Stimples reads the installation media to identify packages that it can install or remove. To run Stimples, simply just type FDIMPLES, and then a huge screen will appear. If you see a menu that says installed but does not let you install other software, you'll have to attach the FreeDo's installation media to your VM. Once finished, restart Stimples and a new interface will appear. If you don't have a CD-ROM device or it's broken, you can attach the live CD and bonus CD media and install the packages in VM. For some special reason, I would like to install everything because why not and this is what you can do with Stimples. If you tried to attach bonus CD and run Stimples, the app might be failed to recognize the CD. Actually, that's a bug, and was fixed in the next version of Stimples. To update the binary execution file, we'll download the file from its official website, link in the description. After that, unzip the file, we'll see multiple folders. Just copy them into the corresponding folders. In this case we'll skip the source folder since we don't have source installed. And yes, you'll have to access your freedo system folder first. This is actually easy. To do so, you can use the modern tool like disk management in Windows if you mount the VHD file to your system, or legacy tools like FDISK. In this case, I'll use FDISK. To do so, configure your VM, start it. In the boot menu section, choose run FreeDos in live environment. Wait a second, and then run FDISK. Let's say we'll use all space in the fixed drive to install FreeDos. In this menu, 
Click Y for a more than 2 GB support. Choose the correct disk, then create DOS partition. Create primary partition, use full size, press ESC, then reboot. After booting into our live CD, we can keep processing our installation using the entire disk. If you decided to look at our VHD after FDISK, it should be looking like this. That's all. If you want me to do more tutorial video about FOSS software, or you have questions about this video, you can leave a comment below. And like this video if you found it useful. Anyway, take care and I'll see you in next video, goodbye.